I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. The story of how Ubon King and I met is an interesting one because it's something that we kept jesting about until the very end because we served together in a church in Akwaibom. He was my head of department and like he would always say that I was eyeing him and I would argue that it was the other way around. So we never quite agreed on that part. But we served together in that church and um, that's how we met. And that's where everything started, way back in Akwaibom State. And five years later, we got married. The story of how Ubon King and I met is an impressive one. And it's one that <laughs> we kept jesting about until the very end because he would always say that I, I was eyeing him because he was my head of department and I didn't used to agree with him because I just finished workers training that time in a church in Akwaibon and I remember that day very vividly he walked up to me and he asked if I would love to serve in the protocol unit that um, our pastor's wife they were all guys in the department and he said our pastor's wife needed a, a lady to be part of the team and at that point in my work with God, I just finished that workers training and I was trying to make up my mind on which of the departments to join. That was the point at which he came to ask and of course, without any hesitation, I said yes, that I would love to be a part of the department because I would always admired my pastor's wife and I wanted an opportunity to get close to her. So that was my motivation also, apart from every other thing. And <laughs> Ubon King would always say that it's because I've been eyeing him, so I jumped at the opportunity. And of course, we would argue about it, but it was, that was how everything started. And five years later, we became husband and wife. One of the things that I really admired a lot about Ubon King was his commitment to God and his commitment to serving God. Because, you know, so many people profess Christianity, and in private, when it, when it really matters most, they are not living up to the things they profess publicly. But I saw someone who did not just profess God openly, but he served him genuinely in private. So he was very, very committed and dedicated to the responsibilities he had in church as the head of the protocol team at that time. And he was also committed to his relationship with God. There's something really intriguing he used to do. He, he, he was so into reading the word of God, so much so that he would be on top of a bike and he would have the Bible on, he would just place it on, at the back of the bike man and he's reading it in motion. He was just feeding on the word of God and it impacted him so much that in those days we had this popular phrase, we used to say, somehow, somehow. And when I say it now, <laughs> it makes me laugh at the memories and everything because what that meant was that if there was any challenge, if there was anything he wanted to do, which looked as if maybe the, the finances were not there, and really the finances were not there at that point in his life, he, would, he believed that somehow God would make it possible. That was the statement of faith, and it always happened, it always happened that whatever he set out to achieve, somehow, somehow, it always came to pass. So he was a very committed Christian. He was committed in his relationship to God. It's not something he played with at all. And he had this way of um, interpreting scriptures and bringing it to contemporary times. So he made it so real. He made the Bible so real for his children. He made the Bible so real for me as his wife because he was also somebody that I learned quite a lot from. Because I believe that marriage also makes you better. It also contributes to making your work with God better. Well, life is not without its challenges. And um, in those early days, there were lots of challenges, especially it had to do with finances. At the point where we met, we were just starting out in life. And um, there's a business that he started at that time, which he called Gadit. And he took a scripture from the Bible to, to call the business that guard it. So that business, like he would always say that when 
we were getting married and he said he was the MDCO of Gadit. <laughs> that people didn't ask him how many people were working in that business so what he did more or less was um, security um, trying to help giving security advice to some of the clients that he had then and it was more or less what he did later on in life on a larger scale which happened at, at a smaller scale at that time so Money was a big challenge, but it didn't define him, it didn't define us. Because I remember at the point where we were getting married, you know, they, of course there were expectations, somehow those expectations did not come to pass, and we ended up sporting in a friend's house at the early years of our, the first one year of our marriage. And um, it's not something that plunged us into depression, because much as I we knew that we were in a tight situation, but we also knew that it was a temporary thing. So I would laugh about, we, we laughed a lot in those days. I remember when we were squatting in a friend's house and at some point, out of curiosity, she came one day and she asked us, why are you sleeping on the floor? And you are laughing so much and having fun. What are you always laughing about? That didn't come from a bad place at all. She was just curious to find out what was making, why we were so happy even in the midst of um, such circumstances imagine a young girl like i was young man like he was sleeping on the floor and all of that and it would have been so easy for me to look at what other girls had where other girls lived what other girls carried to become depressed but i i that did not it didn't really um impact on me in that way because i've always had this sense that no matter what today holds tomorrow would always be better and i i strongly believe that whatever it is i don't have today that if it is in god's plan for me to have it i'll have it tomorrow and moreover we're not lazy people we're not lazy people and we trusted that god would smile on our efforts and make it blossom challenges with finances challenges with accommodation until things turned around it was a gradual thing it was a process and we enjoyed the process because when when you're going through difficulties sometimes you can get so caught up in what you don't have that you lose sight of the lessons that you can learn from today and this is not just me being philosophical this is something that we lived out practically in the early days of our marriage until things began to turn around and even after we moved out of the friend's place we got our own place in alagbado i remember i just had our first child and i went home with my mom for the amugo the traditional thing I, I went home for some for some weeks with my mom and during that time i was away he so i can i can remember the excitement in his voice when he called me that he has found an apartment for us and i was so excited you know, because before this, we had found an apartment in a part of town that when, when he took me to see that apartment, like <laughs> somewhere in scripture that says there was no more spirit left in him. There was no more spirit left in me because when I saw the place and everything, I, 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 I felt so down. But even at that, I was determined that we we'll brave it and we'll just start. But somehow, after we had paid the landlord, yours truly <laughs> the landlord <laughs> disappeared with the money so we ended up not going there we still had to stay at the friends for some weeks and then he called me excitedly that he has found an apartment in alagbado so i came back with baby and my mom and uh, <laughs> i saw the house it was a, a three bedroom apartment it it was it didn't matter that it was in very far away where it was it, all that mattered was that we now had our own place and we didn't even have any um, furniture we barely had furniture we had our mattresses and of course some of the gifts we had gotten at the wedding and we moved in and we started life so that was how things went and one thing that i noticed about ubon king was that nothing really faced him nothing really made him sad or or depressed or lose hope 
I, I thought at some point we had that conversation. I had to ask him that how come you're always in, <laughs> in the midst of such serious challenges? You don't ever give up. You're not, you can still sleep. In fact, sometimes when things happen, he will sleep so soundly that even me, I'll be upset. I'll feel like waking him up and shaking him. Why oh, are you sleeping? I can hardly close my eyes. And he said something to me, which was a huge lesson for me. He said that as long as you don't allow trouble to get into your spirit, that there's no trouble you cannot surmount, that trouble will only come to pass as long as it doesn't get to your spirit. Because the Bible says a broken spirit too can bear. So that was a huge lesson for me. And I think it's, it has really helped me, even in this season, when sometimes it feels really overwhelming with his loss and everything. And I remember those years. I remember those words. And it keeps me going. So, and he always used to say something that um, his, his very popular quote, that the only way to get out of trouble is to enter trouble, which is very ironical. Because how do you want to escape trouble and you're entering into the trouble? But he always had a scripture to back up everything he everything he said and the bible says that god is an ever present help in the time of trouble that it is when you're inside the trouble that you will see the hand of god real, real strong and this had been his mantra for life he believed it he walked it and it it, it worked for him a whole lot so those those challenges were there because the higher you go you realize that you have to face another level of challenge but he always trusted in God to surmount those troubles and not just trusting in God alone, seeking practical solutions to, to those problems. I remember when the business just started and we needed, uh, I think it was, it was compared to now the sum of money that we needed to execute a particular contract was, was small. And he went all over town, um, asking for friends, looking for how we could raise that money. It was like a huge challenge at that time. But eventually, he was able to get somebody who trusted and believed in the vision to invest into that first contract. And the rest, like they say, is history. So all through his life, all through his life, that was how he dealt with challenges. He never allowed challenges to sit in his spirit. He never allowed it to get to his spirit. Because if it got to his spirit, it meant that he would be a broken person. Fubon King was a family man to the core. He loved his family. He loved his wife. He loved his children. He loved everyone around him and he did not joke with family. And um, I think this was even more glaring during the 2020 lockdown season. Because home became a real fun adventure. Because all through that lockdown, all through that lockdown, every single morning we had fellowship at home in fact we had church so good that one of my sisters said that she did she wasn't even looking forward to going to real church when they la the lockdown was called of that because we're having fellowship Ubon king would come he would teach us scriptures we're not just doing um reading scriptures alone in that season the children learned how to do um, powerpoint presentations he, he divided the house into two camps two competitive camps and he would give topics that we had to go research. I found myself in one team against my children in another team. So we had lots, lots of fun. And one of the things that we did as a couple, as long as both of us were in town, which we started, we, we had been going out together every now and then. But as the relationship grew, it even we made, it, we made intentional efforts to ensure that every Friday, if we're both in town, we would go out on a date night without the children. Sometimes we'll go out and we might not even come home again. So once the children saw us going off on Fridays, they didn't even bother, they didn't even ask. They knew that they could come back, they could decide not to come back. So we did that deliberately to build the relationship. Because like he always used to say that one day the children will leave home and um, it will just be us in that relationship, even though that didn't quite play out because I'm here alone. But God has still been faithful because the ideals that we stood for and established as a family still continues. So Ubon King took time. He, he intentionally 
spend time as busy as everybody thought he was he had a special relationship with each of the four children and he took out time to to spend with them he took out time with his son he took out time with his daughters and he always always had a listening ear for them if there was anything bothering them he didn't trivialize it he went all out and he extended it not just to me and the children he extended it to family to extended family extended it to the people around him so that was a sort of person that Obon King was he was a father figure that was that the children looked up to Obon King was a father that any child would have been proud to have and his children really were proud to have him as a father and there's one thing that I tell them today that if Obon King could not afford to see you sad, could not afford to see you needy and look away. Then there's a father of all fathers, a king model fatherhood. Because one thing I tell my children, and I even write it in my write-ups, is that a father in a home models God to his children. If a father behaves in such a way that the children hate anything fatherhood, then they'll have difficulties connecting with their father. It's very easy for the, my children to believe that God is a good God because they saw their father as a good father. So Bon King was a father who did not joke with his children, he did not joke with his wife, he did not joke with his family. So he, he ensured that his family, every member of his family was okay. So that's the kind of person he was to his children and he was a phenomenal husband to me as well. Ubon King's love and passion for people did not start when he got married to me. It did not start when he started Protection Plus because way back then, he was somebody that people used to mill around. He was somebody who was always ready to lend a helping hand and he had a passion for people. I remember when we were courting, he used to say to me that he wants a situation where he even said he wanted to have a large farm that he will be feeding so many people from there. So he had that vision, he had that aspiration. And that's why I always say something to young people who are about to get married, about young people who are about to get married, that marriage does not make anybody. Um, it does not, marriage just reveals who you have always been. So if you see certain signs in the person and you believe that, um, you're going to be able to change that person. You're not the Holy Spirit. You could change the person or that situation might not change. So Ubon King's um, passion, Ubon King's generosity did not just start. It started from way back. And he set up he, the, he, and he set up Protection Plus Services Limited. And it's ironic because a lot of people do not know that Ubon King had a company they knew him more for the motivational speaking and which was just in the last three years of his life. And in the last three years of his life, he had made so much impact that by the time Obon King passed, the messages that were pouring in from all the corners of the globe were so much that, in fact, we had a conversation at home and we were saying, did we really know this man that we, that we lived with? Because the kind of messages I was getting personally and still getting on social media was really, really amazing. So people forgot all about the fact that Ubon King was chairman, C CEO of a business, and they looked more at him from the angle of being a motivational speaker from the Ubon King um, Foundation activities. What the Ubon King Foundation afforded him was an opportunity for him to really live out that desire to impact on young people to see what he genuinely had a heart. He wasn't just in it for the money he, because a lot of the things that he did were pro bono. So he, he didn't just do it for the money, he did it because he genuinely wanted to impact change into the lives of people. So that was the man who born king for you. He, he, he did it from an altruistic um, point of view. So when um, Ubon King registered the Ubon King Foundation, the idea was to impact into young people, teach them in entrepreneurship and um, guide them, mentor them about life, mentor them about business. It was wholesome because aside the motivational speaking, aside the entrepreneurship, 
he was also um, mentoring couples of couples that have reached out even online reach out to us to to for mentoring for counsel and this he did in addition to the entrepreneurship so it was a wholesome thing it encompassed life it encompassed family it encompassed entrepreneurship and coaching so he did all of that at the Obon King Foundation and it is a legacy that we intend to keep alive. It is a legacy that on my watch it cannot go down because this is something that he lived and breathed and this is something that I too also believed in because a lot of times um, somebody has even said to me that women we don't get to live our dreams you know we 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 follow our husband's dreams is what he wants to do that now you can really do your own thing and when i hear things like that it makes me really laugh because the vision that Ubon king had was not just for him alone it was as a result of deep conversations that we have had together and we came up with those ideas that some some things that he, he used to come up with that happened after we had talked and people because he was the more outgoing part of both of us people saw him more out there and forgot that there was somebody who was also like a backbone for him behind the scenes and he never ever felt to mention it it's just that some people did not want to take cognizance of that fact so it wasn't just Ubon King's legacy it was our family legacy so if today one soldier has fallen on the journey one soldier is still standing to ensure that those dreams those aspirations that legacy continues to stand sadly the the journey for Ubon King on this side of the divide ended on the 26th of December 2020 and is a day that will forever be etched in my memory in my memory but one thing that has kept me and the children one thing that has up upheld me is the fact that as a believer I understand that death is not final because the Apostle Paul said that he said for me to live is Christ to die is gain and he further on went to say went on to say that if I am present here I'm paraphrasing now that if I'm present here I'm absent from the Father and if I'm present with the Father I am absent here so either way if whether He's present here or he's with the Father, he still lives on. So Bon King lives on. He's simply not present in this realm. Again, he's present with the Father. And that is one of the reasons why God, I believe, gave me that theme for his home going. I, I, I didn't call it a burial. I called it a home going because God made me understand that he's home with me. So the theme for his home going ceremony was home with the king of kings so when ubon king passed went on to be with the lord on the 26th of december 2020 it was is one of the things that any woman who is married dreads the most but we face that with the children and with all the attendant challenges but i held on to god i kept holding on to his word and he hasn't failed me. I know that the journey is still far. I know that there's so much ahead, lying ahead for us in the future. But I understand that there is a God in heaven and he is the husband of the widow. He is the father of the fatherless. So that has been my rock. And when Ubon King passed, he was 48 years old. This year, he would have been 50. And I sat down with the team at the foundation and we agreed that we're not going to just let this year pass like that on mark that we're going to make sure that we commemorate it in a way that this world remembers that there was a man called ubon king <laughs> if you were to be here on this 50th birthday i don't even want to imagine what would have happened i remember ubon king asking me some few it's not quite two years yet. I remember him asking me many months ago that what would you want me to do for you on your 50th birthday? And it's ironic that today he's not here.
So I really, really wish you were here to celebrate this birthday, but you're not here and we who are left behind for now are going to ensure that this world remembers you, you'll never be forgotten. There are some men that walk this earth and they leave an imprint that is so difficult to erase. So I know that the father of fathers is celebrating you up there and we who are here are cheering. I know that you're part of the cloud of witnesses cheering us on and, and praying for us to run our own race to ensure that we win in the end. So we'll ensure that that happens, that we'll run this race and we'll run it purposefully and phenomenally and meaningfully. So happy posthumous 50th birthday in heaven. The angels, I can picture the angels because we're quite the mover and the shaker. So I know that you're shaking heaven right now on this um, 50th birthday. So happy posthumous birthday and I will always love you. of an army of lions led by a sheep but I'm afraid of a pack of sheep led by lions I came here to raise lions I came here to provoke I came here to defend I came here to send that fire inside no matter the recession in the forest a lion will never eat A lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fattest animal in the jungle. Where are my lions? Can I hear you say Ahu? So at this point in time, it is important that you know that decisions make men. What decision do you want to take today? What decision do you want to happen in your life? What decision do you want to see in five years' time? Everybody overestimates what you can accomplish in one year, but you underestimate what you can accomplish in five years. Stop thinking short term. Think about the long term.